Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Uh, joining me today is the founder and CEO of Innovus Bio, Maria Machacchini. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to have you here today. We should dive right into it. If you could tell the audience a little bit about your background, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Yes. So I'm a scientist. I've been a scientist, I think, ever since I was born. But when I was 23, I decided I wanted to work with the brain because the brain was the big black box. It is still kind of a black box, but it has gotten a lot lighter gray. And so I think that slowly we can start to understand what really happens in neurodegenerative diseases as well as in neuropsychiatric diseases. So that's why I have had two companies. The first one was working on stroke and nerve cell death in stroke. And the second one now is working on nerve cell death in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And, and talk us through, um, thank you so much for your background, a, a little bit about uh, Anovis Bio. I know you just gave us um, you know, some of the focus, but uh, give us, give us a, a broad overview of the company and then we'll talk more about your lead compound. So um, I ran into this compound from the NIH 13 years ago, and it seemed like it was going to work in Alzheimer's disease. There was very little data. In those days, it already did have a different mechanism from the accepted mechanism that one should remove plaque. And as we worked with it, it turns out it does not just work on plaque, but it also has a much broader approach to neurodegeneration because it actually removes all the toxic proteins that do lead to nerve cell death. Bontanatab, our lead compound, does protect nerve cells from dying, which was really what I wanted to do when I was 23 years old. Your, your lead compound has demonstrated great promise uh, thus far. Can you talk through with us some of that data? Sure. So as I was saying, I licensed it a long time ago, and it started to kind of look different from what I licensed in terms of that it did work in more than one animal model. So we put it into the clinic and I always wanted to do both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's because they're the two biggest unmet needs of the aging population. And in fact, we went in order for us to have enough money to do put it into the clinic, we went public. And the first thing we did is to put it into a phase two study for Alzheimer's and another phase two study for Parkinson's disease. The data turned out really well because we can show an improvement in movement and in speed of movement in Parkinson's. And we are improving movement and speed by about 27%. And we can show an improvement in cognition and speed of thinking in Alzheimer's. And there we are improving the cognition and the speed by which people think by about 30%. So that gave us then the opportunity to raise more money and go into phase three. And in fact, right now we are in phase three for Alzheimer's and for Parkinson's disease. In, in your particular focus, what are some of the biggest challenges um, you know, when you're dealing with these neurodegenerative diseases? The interesting thing is that the biggest challenge for us for me specific, because for a long time I was alone in my company, was credibility. I said Alzheimer's is not plaque, Alzheimer's is not tangles, Parkinson's is not Lewy bodies. It is the toxicity that precedes plaque, tangles, and Lewy bodies. And nobody believed it. So raising money for something nobody believes is really, really hard. And thankfully, I did sell my first company and had some money so I could help it out. Thankfully, I also had really great private investors that believed in a different approach. But as I said, at some point, I had to go public because the big funds really and the pharma really didn't believe it. Slowly, they do because we have real data in humans. So when what's, what's next for, for this lead candidate? And, um, you know, where, where do you see this, this going? So as I was saying, we are in phase three. Now, the FDA requires you to do two phase three studies, which means two large efficacy studies in every indication you study. 
So we expect to have to do two phase threes in Alzheimer's and two phase threes in Parkinson's disease. By the end of this year, 2023, we will have the data for the first Alzheimer and Parkinson's study. Then we will do a second study. And if both are fine, then we can actually get approval. Let's let's shift focus here, Maria, if you don't mind, to the challenges around, because you, you were talking about this a little while ago, uh, the clinical trials, right? The challenges around clinical trials. Um, how, how difficult it uh, how difficult is it finding patients and, and what other uh, challenges do you face uh, with clinical trials? So clinical trials, um, maybe I should say, I personally was an, an animal scientist. So I knew very little about clinical trials. You know, I can tell you everything about a mouse and all of a sudden I'm dealing with humans. And we were really small. We have been hiring a lot because A, uh, a human is a human and clinical trials are not animal studies. They're much more complicated, but also you have much more ethical questions and you have much more comorbidities. When you do mice, they were bred to be healthy and have exactly the genetic background you want them to have. In humans, you have a much bigger combination of people. They have comorbidities, they have different aspects, they look at different things. So I think the hardest thing was to hire people and to understand what it takes to do a clinical trial. In terms of recruiting, I have to say, we have really not had any problems. And the reason I believe is that A, we have a drug that's a once a day pill. If you compare that with most of the clinical trials done today in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, they're infusions, they're antibodies. You have to put people into machines like PET scans and MRIs. And really all we do is a once a day pill and we take some blood and we ask them some questions. So from that point of view, patients really like our drug. Um, there has also been cases where, especially in Parkinson's, patients said they felt they were writing faster, and that spread like wildfire. So we have way too many, I mean, I should never say way too many, but we have more Parkinson's patients than the clinics can treat at one time. So we have waiting lists for Parkinson's. In Alzheimer's, it's a little harder because Alzheimer patients are older they have more comorbidities. And in a lot of ways, you have to tell their caregivers that you would like them to be in a clinical study. So in Alzheimer's, we have actually started an advertising campaign where we do talk to caregivers and to Alzheimer's patients to increase the participation in our studies. And thank you so much for sharing too, by the way. Um... When, when it comes to your your priorities for 2023 for Anovus Bio, can you talk us through some of those and and what you know what your outlook is on the year that that you're willing to share? Obviously, uh, sure. I'm very single mindedly focused on getting these two drugs done. So um, the way it looks like now for Parkinson's, 100 percent sure we will finish the study in December, maybe a little earlier and have the data early in January. That's our first phase three study in Parkinson's disease. That will give us and the patients so much credibility. And it's gonna be really easy at that point to raise more money because these studies cost a lot of money. Now for Alzheimer's, I also hope we will be done by the end of the year, but it may take one or two months longer. But again, early next year, we will have the data. So this year, we really want to do, finish these two studies. What we also want to do is prepare for the next study because we have to do a second study. And if you look at unmet need, the biggest unmet need is really in advanced Alzheimer's and in advanced Parkinson's. There is absolutely nothing that even remotely works in advanced patients. And we don't know if our drug works in advanced. We know from the phase two that it works in early. Our phase two was done in early patients. 
So what we are considering and discussing right now is to do a short study in advance in Alzheimer's and in Parkinson's patients so that we can better see if our much larger study will be in advance or not. So if you had to, what is, what is a, uh, like, talk us through some of the data that you would like to see uh, as we head into 2024 then, uh, because then you'll have that data. What is, um, in terms of data, what does success look like for you? So the FDA has guidelines. And interestingly enough, I didn't know that. Remember, I'm I'm a mouse person. But interestingly enough, they actually don't just look at cognition. They also look at how do you feel of activities of daily living. Who cares if you can add up one and three, but you can't go to the bathroom. You cannot put on your socks. So they ask us to have two tests. One is activities of daily living. The other is cognition. Interestingly enough, they do the exact same thing in Parkinson's. One is movement. You want to move better. But the other is, how do you feel? Can you actually do things better? Because if you move better, but you feel horrible, you know, maybe that's not the right drug. So in both cases, we have accepted the FDA approved tests for either improvement in cognition and improvement in activities of daily living or improvement in movement and improvement in activities of daily living. And what we are looking for is statistically significant data to show that our drug works. Now, we are pretty ambitious. Um, People that have followed the Canamab and the Alzheimer's field know that what, uh, what Biogen has said is that their drug improves cognition by 27% over placebo. That really means that patients decline by 73% because placebo goes down 100%. So 27% better than, than 100 is still minus 73. Now we are more ambitious than that. We really would like patients to stay stable and not lose any cognition. So we'll see how that goes. Well, Maria, I want to thank you so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast and sharing your story and telling us more about Anovis Bio and your lead candidate. And I can't wait to have you on again real soon. Um, you know, hopefully, well, definitely next year when we go through the data, but maybe we can have you on again uh, in 2023 to, to talk through some other uh, pieces or get you on a panel. So really excited to, to continue the conversation. Thank you so much, Jared. It was a pleasure talking to you.